What's up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in today. I thought I would continue my series on makeup in your 30s versus makeup in your 20s. As a disclaimer, there is nothing wrong with aging. These videos are just to help those of you who are like me who have noticed changes in their eyes, skin, whole face really because aging is inevitable. It happens to all of us and it is a blessing. So hopefully these videos are helping you guys out. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you would like more videos like this. And today I thought I would focus mostly on eyeshadow. Eyeshadow has definitely changed for me. I find that I have to place certain textures of shadows in different spots to get sort of like the look that I'm going for. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tips. I upload videos two to three times a week and mostly beauty related, but I'm gonna start doing some lifestyle coming up soon, so let's jump into it. Okay, so first step, always, always, always prime your eyelids. I can't stress this enough. If you go on with an eyeshadow on the bare skin, it's gonna crease. Your eyes have oils there, especially if you've put like a cream on or something. Your eyeshadow is gonna crease if you don't use a primer. You don't have to use the exact same one that I'm using. Some people even use their concealer and that's better than nothing, but definitely use a primer. I like to use Paint Really Paint Pop by MAC. These come in all kinds of different colors, so if your skin tone is darker than mine, they do have one that will match you. So, when applying your eyeshadows, the only real difference that I've found is that my eyes in the crease now, like my creases have sort of fallen a little bit. So, and I do notice that I have like a little bit of a flap of skin going on there. Nothing too crazy. I know I'm only 32 and I don't have like a lot of wrinkles and I don't have like, I don't have a lot of fine lines. I know that. I know 32 is not old. So just to be clear, I know 32 is not old. Now that we have that out of the way, one thing that I found is that I have to keep shimmer colors to certain parts of my lid. So I don't put them in the crease anymore. I used to be able to use shimmer colors in my crease to sort of make that area easier to blend. Now that my crease has sort of fallen a little bit, I find that putting a shimmer in that area kind of highlights that and that's not what I wanna do. So I keep shimmer colors to the lid and to the inner corner and to the brow bone. So just avoid this area. Um, and that's sort of a rule that I use on mature skin as well. So if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s and you're finding that shimmers just don't look the same on you, you can still wear them. If anybody that tells you that you can't wear shimmery eyeshadow, I disagree with that. And then that is something that is, that is sort of like a rule that floats around um, sometimes. And it, I don't like hearing that because you can wear anything at any age. You just have to change up the way you're using it. So I'm gonna take Bake Sale by Makeup Geek. This is a really great matte color. Um, it's very neutral and I'm going with sort of like a warm, warmish gold metallic sort of look today. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna take that on a Morphe M200. This is a great crease brush. And I'm just gonna put that right on the tip of that brush. I like to initially, when I'm putting the shadow on, I like to place it towards the outer half of my eye rather than going in and sweeping it this way because wherever you place the shadow first, that's where you're gonna get the most of your application. So we wanna keep our eyes nice and lifted so most of the shadow and color is gonna be placed on the outer half of the lid. So just going back and forth in windshield wiper motions and then like I do like a little sort of swirl out here to swirl the color up rather than pushing it down into like what would be like my smile lines there. So a little swirl on the outside and then I go back in just like windshield wiper, windshield wiper swirl kind of thing. This is very, very technical. Same thing on the other side. I'm only showing you twice here so that you can get a chance to see. So I kind of swirl and then go back and forth, swirl and then go back and forth. And so notice also that I'm holding the brush really low and I find that this helps me to have a little bit more control and not press as hard so that I'm kind of feathering this shadow on. So you'll see that I move my hand when I'm going to sort of pat and apply more product on in certain areas. But usually when I'm just sort of sweeping product on, I keep my hand down to the lower part of the handle. Okay, so if this is looking messy now, it's okay. We're gonna go in and clean it up later. So I do wanna incorporate some shimmer so that I can show you guys how I use shimmer now because it's definitely different than it used to be. Also ignore my nails. Like I've had a couple <laughs> fly off in the last little while. Getting them redone tomorrow, but anyway. I'm gonna take this Morphe 12S palette. Um, I just bought this the other day. If you guys are in Canada and you do not wanna pay the ridiculous shipping prices from Morphe eyeshadows, 
you can go to the As Seen on TV store, aka Showcase, and they sell Morphe palettes there. I think this one was like $20-ish, and you get, what is this, 12, 12S, 12 shadows. So it's really awesome, and so far I'm really liking the texture of these. They're all shimmer, so that's kind of like, I wish that it was a mix of textures, but the palettes in this size that were a mix of textures were sold out. So I just kind of took what I can get. I didn't want to get one of the big, huge ones until I figured out if they were good shadows or not, and they are. So I'm super pumped and definitely going to be using this all the time. So I'm going to take this little mini uh, 239. This is a MAC brush. You can get the full size. I'm going to take this, the third shadow over here on the top, just on the side of that brush. I gave this a little test this week, and these last really long on the lid. So I'm just going to pat that all over my lid here. And this kind of just like reflects the light really nicely. It's a really, really pretty color. And just patting it on. And these pack on really, really well. Like I'm impressed by these eyeshadows. I kind of thought, you know, like I like Morphe brushes and I have, I'm part of like the Morph Me brush club by Live Glam. And I was kind of skeptical. I was like, I bet you these shadows suck and all these people that are paid to talk about them are just full of, full of it. But they're actually awesome. Like I'm jumping on this bandwagon and I'm jumping pretty hard. And I'm just gonna blend those two shadows together. You don't wanna go too crazy because you really don't wanna bring that shimmer up, but you'd want it, the two colors to kind of blend together so you can't tell where one ends and the other begins because we wanna keep it nice and soft. So next I'm gonna go in with Handwritten. I clearly love this eyeshadow. I've had this for years and I love it. It's probably my favorite matte brown eyeshadow from MAC. I'm gonna take this flat eyeshadow brush. Any flat eyeshadow brush will do. This is one that I got in my kit from makeup school years ago. Most of the other brushes fell apart, but this one has stayed. So I'm gonna apply that to the outer corner and I am just patting this on because I want it to be nice and thick. So this is a matte eyeshadow um, and I'm gonna extend this a little bit up into the crease. So I'm just kind of placing it a little bit higher on my lid and going in with that blending brush and just sort of taking that into the crease there. And I'm gonna blend the shadows on my lid too, just going back and forth over the two and that will blend them together nicely. Same thing on the other side. So when I'm bringing this into my crease, I'm swirling it up and in because I don't wanna swirl it down. We don't want anything, we don't want our eyeshadow to kind of be tilted down this way. We want it to be tilted up because that really opens up our eyes. So I'm just gonna go in and clean up around the edges with this little Tartlet Tease palette. You don't have to use this one. You can use any shadow that you like. I just like to use sort of like a matte bone color. So I'm gonna grab this one here. And this is on a Morphe M516. Honestly, this is the only thing I use this brush for. I probably wouldn't buy it because I find it a little useless, but it's good for this because it doesn't wipe my eyebrows off when I go to soften my eyeshadow. So I find when you're softening out your matte shadow that you put in the crease using a matte shadow to do that is really the best way to achieve sort of like that nice clean look honestly this is kind of like an eraser like it sort of erases the harsh line and now it's nice and blended and it was super easy to do and i'm going to take this mikasa e310 it's a little dirty we're just going to pretend like it's not i think i used it for the exact same thing yesterday and i'm just going to drag that underneath my eye. You don't want to use any shimmery shadows underneath the eye either. You want to keep anything that you're using underneath sort of to mimic an eyeliner. You want to keep those matte because these are where a lot of lines start guys. Like this is where we're going to start to get them. It's mostly around here and out here. So if you put shimmer there, it's going to highlight any type of lines that you have. You see, so you want to just like avoid at all costs putting anything shimmery that's going to reflect the light. Avoid putting shimmer anywhere that you have more lines, more fine lines. And that's just a good rule of thumb. So that's also why you avoid it in the crease because that's where your eyes will start to line first. All over the lid is no problem. Typically when you're in your 30s, you don't have a ton of lines right on your eyelid. So you still can rock the shimmer there. And as you notice that you start to get more lines there, just keep it in the inner corner and under the brow bone and you should be fine. So eyeliner is definitely something that changes in your 30s and into your 40s and as you age. That really nice, thick, clean, winged eyeliner looks beautiful. But when your eyes start to fall up here, like mine are, and everybody's do, it's part of life, we need to embrace it, aging is a blessing. 
The winged eyeliner doesn't look so good. I never really liked that trend anyway. It's not really a trend. It's here to stay, I think. I don't think it's going anywhere, but it's not, it's not something that I've ever really enjoyed, and I think it's because of the way my eyes are shaped, or it just doesn't really suit my style either. Like, I'm like a little bit more like let the shadow speak for itself kind of makeup person, but I prefer to use powder or pencil. So the pencil I'm gonna use is Teddy. You can get this at MAC still. Obviously, I love this. It's really tiny. I use this in my kit, actually. Uh, as well but this is my own personal one and it's tiny and because I love it so when it comes to doing eyeliner I like to use something that you can apply to the lash line and then go in and sort of smudge it out so I'm just gonna go in and I sort of like go back and forth with my eyeliner keep it as close to the lash line as possible we're gonna smudge it out so if it looks kind of like zippery it's all good Okay, Okay. so then I'm gonna take this Morphe, what is this, PK45, and I'm just gonna go and smudge that along the lash line. I find as we get older, anything harsh around the eyes just ages you. Like if you're wearing too much eyeliner and it's just like a harsh black line and it's like drawn on there, I just find that that really makes you look older and it doesn't flatter anybody, so make sure that it's nice and soft and smudged and I find that's a much nicer look on everyone. Oh my God. I'm trying to get close so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm basically just smudging it and sort of smoking it out so that it looks a little bit more clean, smoky, not harsh. I'm against all harsh things except for harsh opinions. I'm a big fan of harsh opinions. So I'm getting to my inner corner by sort of approaching it from underneath rather than on top because if I went in and drew it like this, I probably have a harsher line. So I'm just trying to get it sort of like on the underside of my inner corner here, if you can see, and sort of drawing it on like that and then doing the same thing coming in from the same angle with my brush to smooth it out. And then that's how you can avoid having too much in the inner corner. I find that you wanna keep the liner thicker towards the outer corner and thinner towards the inner corner because that way it sort of gives you that lifted up look because as our, our eyes are starting to fall it's it's just reality guys it's just the way it is so we want to keep everything as lifted as possible eyeliner can open your eye but if you have a super thick dark line there it doesn't open your eye it closes your eye so make sure you keep that in mind okay so liners on next I'm gonna take that morphe palette again I'm gonna take that same little brush and yeah we'll use the same color so I'm going to apply that to my inner corner and I'm just kind of like tapping that on. You can bring it right up through around your nose sort of bone there if you want to. And that really helps to sort of brighten your eyes and make you look a little bit more awake. I find my eyes have gotten a little bit darker, there's a lot more shadow happening around there these days. I'm also going to take what's left on my brush and hot. Did that, what did that do? It's too dark, too dark, abort, abort. Lesson learned. Taking Rapunzel by Makeup Geek. This is great for the brow bone on a pale person like myself. And just keeping that nice and close to the brow. That's better. So, to summarize, shimmer, not in the crease anymore. Uh, you can use shimmer on your inner corner. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that Rapunzel in there just to brighten it up. Shimmer in your inner corner. On your lid, you can use shimmer as well. No shimmer in the crease anymore, guys. Those days are over. Last step, eyelashes. Curl your eyelashes. So I use a Revlon lash curler. I find this works really, really well. Lash curlers are not something you need to spend a lot of money on. This one is pretty good. So then I'm gonna use my Marc Jacobs mascara is necessary. Some people like to use brown mascara. Use whatever you like. In this case, it doesn't really affect much. So mascara on the bottom is a mistake that I do see quite often. I actually saw a blog about this and I shared it on my Facebook page. If you put too much mascara on the bottom, it looks clumpy and it sort of drags you down a little bit. It makes it look like you don't know how to put mascara on. Whether you use the same one or not, just don't put too much on. I use this MAC Extended Play because it never clumps and it lengthens. So people want their lashes on the bottom to be defined which is fine, That's to there's nothing wrong with that at all. Because as you can see, the difference between the two, it really does open your eye, makes your eye look larger. However, when you have too much on and it looks clumpy, it drags your eye down and it makes you look older. 
and there's nothing wrong with looking old, but if your goal is to not look older than you are, which is the case for a lot of people, avoid too much mascara on the bottom. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope that you guys learned some great eyeshadow tips today. I hope that this was helpful to those of you who have noticed changes in their skin and their eyes and everything and just weren't really sure what to do about it. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button down below and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you found it was helpful for you. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.